We're now joined uh, via Zoom by uh, the co-lead on the Sisonke J&J vaccine rollout uh, program, Professor Linda Gale Becker. Very good afternoon to you, Prof. Thank you so very much for availing yourself to SABC this afternoon. Happy to join you. Uh, all right, so we started off uh, quite shaky uh, on the wrong foot with uh, the AstraZeneca issues. Since then, what's been your analysis of the vaccine rollout in, in the country so far? Would you say that it is indeed uh, going well? Yeah, I think given that this was the contingency plan and we had to put it together very quickly um, and, you know, to ensure that uh, above all, the safety of the vaccine was there, as well as trying to reach those who need the vaccine the most uh, as soon as possible. Considering that all had to be done literally within days, I think the first two weeks have been an astounding success. We met uh, by tomorrow evening, we will have distributed all of the first batch of doses. And we, as you see, are poised uh, to receive the next. And we are definitely learning how to oil the machinery and make sure that in the second round, we can now begin to spread our efforts a little bit and reach even further into those provinces that, uh, that you were talking about. All right, let's talk about that reach. Obviously, there is a system in place and there is an order in place. But on the back of that, as we discuss uh, the, the, the arrival of the second batch of the J&G, J and J uh, vaccines here in South Africa. Um, I mean, you know, one would, would wonder why didn't why was this a contingency plan? Why wasn't it the plan in, in the first place? And of course, we're looking retrospectively now at that. And I wonder if you're critical of, of, of the fact that we could have just started with the J and J um, as opposed to the embarrassment, really, uh, and what happened with the AstraZeneca vaccines. So I think the only thing to blame here is the pathogen itself, mm. the microbe. <laughs> yeah. It, um, you know, it, it underwent this mutation. Uh, the variation developed. Uh, we had really hot off the press uh, research evidence that perhaps the AstraZeneca, we weren't entirely uh, sure would work against the variant. And we're still hoping to... Uh, try and do the research that could confirm that. We don't know yay or nay mm. whether it would have uh, effective uh, effectiveness against severe disease and death. We did happen to have that data on the J&J, but it was very fresh, very recent uh, that the phase three ended. Luckily, uh, 7,000 South Africans took part in that trial. And luckily, uh, that happened at the time that the new variant was circulating. So with that reassuring data, we were able to move quickly. But literally, these uh, these events are happening very uh, rapidly and one after the other. As, as listeners may know, just yesterday, the FDA was looking at the data of the J&J. We are expecting uh, an EUA to come through on that today. Yeah. Uh, so really, these events are happening incredibly fast. And I think mm -hmm. we've made uh, good out of what could have been a bad a bad scenario. So um, I think no blame. I think just, you know, congratulations to everyone that we've been able to pull this together. Prof, um, are you confident of the fact that South Africa will then uh, reach uh, the target of uh, vaccinating 1.1 uh, million people at the end of March? I mean, apart from whether or not we'll have enough vaccines, I then also wonder in terms of people willingly or, or, or wanting to actually uh, take the vaccine. I see there are many, many people who are very happy to take the vaccine, but I'm sure you know that on the back of that, there are also many people who either don't trust it or, or just don't really want to take a vaccine for whatever reason uh, that, that, that they have. Um, so, yeah, just going back to that question then, are, is there confidence in, 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 in the fact that we can indeed have 1.1 uh, million people vaccinated by end of March? Well, you know, I think government has a plan for other vaccines. The yeah. Sasonki program, which I am involved in together with the South African Medical Research Council, we have a promise of 500,000. So that I feel confident about. Um, that I understand that there are other vaccines on their way. I think what we've shown in these first two weeks is there is incredible enthusiasm for the vaccine. I think that has kind of surpassed our 
our imagination in that regard. And I think it's done a lot to reassure us that people are going to step forward. I do think there are still going to be those who feel anxious, who need to be reassured. But I think there's reassurance in watching their colleagues, seeing their colleagues stepping up. We do have a very effective uh, safety um, uh, network to make sure that we're very aware if there are any adverse events, we're monitoring that very carefully. We will continue to keep our colleagues uh, in the healthcare workforce appraised. Uh, I think all of that adds to confidence that people <coughs> should step forward and receive a vaccine if they can. Yeah, and you know, you talk about the fact that you are monitoring those, um, uh, monitoring and I, and I assume quite closely those um, who have uh, taken the vaccine. What's been uh, the the response <clears throat> thus far. I mean, you know, I've I've I've, I've managed to take a look at uh, some people on uh, social media who've had you know positive responses. I don't suppose that you'll see much of a change after you've taken a vaccine. Uh, but of course, the concern uh, was perhaps from some people, you know, in case people get sick afterwards or you know that kind of a situation. How much have you seen of that? Have have people uh, kind of had? Um, uh, what's the medical term for it? Where we, you know, uh, any kind of problems after after the have, uh, taking uh, the the vaccine? Yeah, I mean, the important thing for people to know is that if a vaccine is efficacious, if it's doing its job, it often does cause what we call reactogenicity, yeah. and that means a little bit of a uh, a reaction to the vir uh, to the vaccine, which, if you like, is almost a, a mild form of the disease itself. So what it's doing is it's stirring up the immune system and the immune system responds a little bit as if it were that, you know, you were having a mild case of the disease. So we know we're seeing some headache. We see people are having a bit of a sore arm. They are reporting in some cases a little bit of chills or fever um, and, and maybe feeling a bit fluey for half a day or a day. Generally, these are all disappearing within a day or two. Uh, and so, you know, again, I think it is to uh, make people aware that this happens normally uh, in a way we expect it. And they can certainly take anti-analgesics, painkillers to relieve that um, and hang in there because it means the vaccine's doing its job. Yes. We have not seen anything, yeah. uh, much like the phase three trials, we've not seen anything that is more worrying uh, that is related to some kind of severe uh, effect, side effect of, of the vaccines to date. But we will continue to monitor that very carefully um, and obviously uh, are working closely with J&J &J in that regard as well. All right. Uh, Prof. Linda Gale, Becker, thank you so much uh, for your input. Much appreciated. Thanks for your work. Thank you, sir.